Hi there, this is Diru Munuluru and welcome back. So let's now get started with lambdas. Here you can see the Greek letter lambda which is used as a representation for this topic. In the introductory lecture, we looked at an example where a lambda was passed as an argument to a tree set constructor which was expecting a comparator instance. So the lambda there encapsulated the logic for sorting. So behavior was getting passed around via a lambda expression. And lambda is essentially a function which can be passed around. It is not associated with any class and it is simply a function by itself. That is in our familiar terminology, a method by itself. And lambdas are considered as one of the most important features which got added in Java 8. And with that, Java now has some elements of functional programming too. And lambdas enable in writing faster, more compact and cleaner code. And before lambdas, anonymous classes were used to perform similar task of passing around functionality. And in this lecture, we will learn about the lambda syntax and we will also discuss how it is different from anonymous classes. First a brief look at the history concerning lambdas. Lambdas come from lambda calculus which is a mathematical notation for functions. And it was introduced in 1930s by the famous mathematician Alonzo Church who was also a PhD advisor to Alan Turing who we know is considered as the father of computer science. And all functions in lambda calculus are anonymous. That is they are nameless. And here is an example lambda calculus expression. Here x is the argument to the anonymous function which is represented by lambda and the body follows the dot. Here the square of the input argument is being computed. And in 1950s famous computer scientist John McCarthy invented Lisp while he was at MIT. And Lisp is the second oldest high level programming language. In case you haven't heard of McCarthy, he is considered as one of the founders of artificial intelligence field and is credited with coining the term artificial intelligence, which we know is very hot right now. So he developed Lisp and Lisp was designed to model mathematical problems and was heavily influenced by lambda calculus. And here is an example lambda function in Lisp. The term lambda here is used as an operator to define an anonymous function and the example itself is similar to the lambda function which we saw earlier. So Lisp and other functional programming languages had their roots in lambda calculus and they are all about programming using functions. So what exactly is a lambda? It is an anonymous function. So it is not an anonymous class but an anonymous function. And it is a compact way of defining a function which can be passed around. So it is useful when we want to pass around some functionality. And it helps in doing it in a very compact way. Since it can be passed around, it is basically an expression. A lambda expression. And these are some of the languages that support lambda expressions. And here is the syntax for a lambda expression in Java. So the expression begins with the function parameters inside parentheses. So these are the parameters of the anonymous function. Next the parameter list is followed by the arrow symbol which is then followed by the function's body. So just like any method the body can have multiple statements and the last statement would be the written statement unless the function is not expected to return anything. And in certain cases it would also be possible to further simplify the syntax and we will soon look at how that can be done. And a lambda expression is assigned to a variable whose type is a functional interface. So the target type for lambda expression is a functional interface. Typically the variable would be a method parameter. And we know that a functional interface is an interface that exposes a single abstract method. When discussing anonymous classes, we said that such a functional interface can be used to define a strategy interface. And the different anonymous classes implementing that interface would serve as the different strategies. 
So similarly, we can now have different lambda expressions acting as different strategies. So that's a normal use case for lambda expressions. Since a functional interface has a single abstract method, it is also referred to as a single abstract method interface, SAM. And this is an example from our discussion of anonymous classes. And we have also seen it in the introductory lecture. Here an instance of an anonymous class is being passed as a comparator to the constructor of tree set. Now let's see how we can replace the anonymous class with a lambda expression. So first we have this block of code and we need to fill it with our lambda expression. And due to space constraint, only the relevant part of the expression is being shown here. The goal of our lambda expression is to provide the logic for the compare method. And we know that lambda expression starts with function parameters. So we have this, the two method parameters of the compare method. Next we have the arrow symbol. And after that we simply have the body which is identical to the body in the compare method. So we are simply passing the functionality of the compare method. As we can see it is much more compact than the anonymous class version without the new keyword and the following type name and it is also very efficient as we are not creating an object here. Now this lambda expression can be further simplified too. And here is the first simplification. The parameter type string for the two parameters are omitted here as they can be automatically inferred by the compiler. The compiler infers the type from the type argument that is also specified in the instance creation expression. And such type inferring may not be possible for all lambda expressions. Next if the body involves a single statement then we can have something like this where the braces, the written keyword and the ending semicolon can be omitted. And this is essentially an expression. So in this case the generic syntax would be like this and this would be the generic syntax for the first two examples where we have one or more statements. So we have the braces and within that the statements. So those are a couple of simplifications that can be performed to make lambda expression even more compact. Note that here we know that comparator is a functional interface. If it is not a functional interface then we would get a compilation error if we try to pass a lambda expression. That is a lambda expression cannot be assigned to a method parameter or any variable whose type is not a functional interface. So a lambda expression can only be an implementation of a functional interface. Now if you think about it, it also makes sense. For instance, if we consider an interface which has two methods with different names and same parameter less, then if we pass a lambda expression, Compiler will not know which of the two methods the lambda function should correspond to as the lambda function does not have a name. So here we are saying that the interface has two methods with different names but with same parameter less. And the compiler will not know to which of these two functions the lambda expression would correspond to. So it's got to be a functional interface and this will also be demonstrated shortly. Now let's look at few lambda examples. Here is the first one. It simply represents a method that takes no parameters and returns a void. This one represents a method in a functional interface that takes a book instance and just prints the title of the book. So the written type here is also void. Here a book serves as an input and a boolean value is written. If the book's rating is greater than or equal to 4.5, a true would be written. Here is a simplified representation of the same example. The method's body is just an expression. So no braces or the written keyword or the ending semicolon. Here is further simplification. Assuming the type of the method parameter can be inferred by the compiler and this would be the simplest form possible. Note that there is no parenthesis here as there is only a single parameter. So parenthesis is not required if we have just a single parameter. And parenthesis is mandatory if we have more than one parameter or no parameters at all. And in this example a string is being written so we have an expression as body. However we cannot do this. 
and that's because it is not a valid statement. And this is how it should be. You need to have the written keyword. And finally, you cannot do this as it is not an expression, it is a statement. So, if you do not have braces, then it should be an expression. And if you have braces, you can have one or more statements or no statements at all, as in the first example. So, those are few examples. In case if it is confusing, just watch the lecture once again and it should be really helpful. And the demo in the follow up lecture should also be helpful. Now, as we mentioned earlier, before Java 8, anonymous classes played the role of lambdas. So, now the question is what are the differences between the two of them? With an anonymous class, we have an associated object, and so there is the overhead of loading the class. And it is also verbose as we have to use the new keyword followed by the super type name and also the method names when defining them. But with lambda, there is no associated object as it is implemented differently. And it is based on the bytecode instruction called invoke dynamic. So it is more efficient as we don't have to create an object. In fact, Brian Gertz, who is the Java language designer, also mentioned about this in one of his talks and he specifies about some performance benchmarks too about how lambdas are more efficient than using anonymous objects. And moreover, we know that lambdas have more compact representation without the new keyword or the type name or the method name. And we know that anonymous objects are created on every use unless they are declared as singletons using static final fields. And with lambdas, memory is allocated only once for the method. Hence, very little memory footprint is used. With an anonymous class, the target type can have multiple methods and the target type is nothing but a class or an interface that the anonymous class is inheriting from. That is the anonymous class is implementing. But with lambda, it's got to be a functional interface. It cannot even be an abstract class with a single abstract method. This will also be demonstrated in the next lecture. So those are the differences between anonymous classes and lambdas. Lambdas are more efficient and are more compact and work with only functional interfaces. So that's about it. And in the next lecture, we will do a demo of lambda expressions. Thank you.